Hello my lovelies! Welcome to a new video by Art by Esther A. The painting we are putting together today is part of a group collaboration to depict a story from the Brothers Grimm collection. Shell Presto organized this magic-filled collab and gave five artists the task of picking a story from the collection and creating a drawing that could be the book cover for the story. Shell Presto chose the four skillful brothers, A Art Adventure picked the seven ravens, Aurora's Art World selected Jorinda and Jorindel, Blue Tea Art chose Red Riding Hood, and lastly, I picked Hansel and Gretel. Please be sure to check out our playlist of videos and leave a comment under each artist's video saying hello. There is a link in the card in the upper right hand portion of the video and another in the description. Just for fun, put a little owl emoji in your comment. In the late 1700s, there were two German brothers named Willem and Jacob. They grew up searching for and collecting children's stories and folk tales and even wrote a few of their own. In 1812 and 1815, the brothers published two volumes worth of stories named Children's and Household Tales, which in German is Kinder und Hausmarken. The story of Hansel and Gretel has some sad and scary parts, so I will be summarizing it for you. So grab your magic wand and favorite snack and join me for a journey through the land of fairy tales. Once upon a time, there was a small family who lived in a cabin in the woods. One day, a great famine took over the land. The woodcutter's wife, who was stepmother to his children, said they wouldn't starve to death if they got rid of the children. The father did not like this idea, but he eventually gave in to his wife's insistence. However, at that very same moment, the little boy Hansel and his little sister Gretel overheard their plans. They waited for their parents to go to bed that night, and they snuck outside to find as many pebbles as they could stuff into their little pockets. The next day, while Hansel and Gretel were taken deep into the woods, Hansel dropped the small white pebbles behind them. After they were abandoned by their parents, the children followed the trail of pebbles all the way back home. The stepmother was furious to see they had returned, and she locked them inside the house. This meant they couldn't escape or sneak out and pick up more pebbles. The next morning, the children were taken even deeper into the woods. This time, Hansel tore off small pieces of bread and left a trail back to their house. After their parents once again abandoned them, the children looked for the crumbs, but discovered that birds had eaten them. The poor children were lost in the woods and wandered for days. Hungry and tired, they searched through the scary, dark woods until they saw light coming through the creepy branches. They were astonished to see a big cottage made of cake, candy, bread, ice cream, cupcakes, pretzels, and chocolates. It was surrounded by a beautiful field of edible trees and flowers. Without any hesitation, the children began to eat the roof, pick off the window sills, and devour the candy-covered house. All of a sudden, the door opened and an old hag stepped outside. She lured Hansel and Gretel inside with the promise of delicious food, yummy snacks, a nice hot bath, and cozy beds to sleep in. The children were unaware that she was actually a witch. She had built this gingerbread house to trick and capture children into her home so she could cook and eat them. The witch, who was blind, threw Hansel into a cage and forced Gretel to be her slave. She force-fed Hansel lots of food, 
throughout the day, day after day, to fatten him up. Hansel soon realized her evil plan, so he would trick the witch to think he was too skinny to eat. When the blind witch would reach for his finger to measure if he was getting fatter, Hansel instead placed a stick in her hand. For several weeks, the witch was fooled, but soon began to grow impatient. She decided to eat Hansel anyway. While preparing the stove to cook the little boy, the witch decided she was so hungry that she could eat Gretel too. The witch ordered Gretel to open the oven and see if the fire was hot enough. However, Gretel pretended to not understand what the witch said. This infuriated her, so the witch began to demonstrate how Gretel should lean over and check the heat from the oven's fire. Gretel quickly pushed the witch over into the oven, and the witch was destroyed in the flames. Gretel rescued her brother from the cage, and they put all of the witch's jewelry into their pockets and packed food into their sacks. They escaped and managed to eventually find their way home. The children's father was overcome with joy and gratitude when he saw his children walk in. He told them that their stepmother had died and he had been very unhappy every day since they were gone. Using the witch's wealth, the family was able to afford all the food they could ever need, and they lived happily ever after. The End Working on this painting and reading through the story was so much fun and really inspiring. It challenged me to create a depiction that had not already been seen. I wanted to create something that played with the imagery and scale of a big, scary, looming forest opening up to a small, colorful cottage. The forest trees were drawn quite large and the candy trees in house were made smaller to create a feeling that the forest was looming over the children. I added a dark tree with creepy crawling branches to create more of a dramatic presence. The gingerbread house is a staple of the story, so I added some elements of common German architecture to the framing of the house and windows. I tried to envision what type of candy would make children want to run up to a stranger's house and start eating it. So I made the house out of strawberry shortcake and painted the side wall with a waffle cone pattern. In addition to colorful edible treats kids in the United States like, I wanted to add German sweets. So I did some research on popular German chocolates and candy and then added some of those to the house and grass. Fairy tales are a very big part of our childhoods. Many of the stories focus on being a good person, having good morals, and they teach us valuable lessons. Working together on this collab was so much fun and very rewarding. I do hope you will join me in watching everyone's videos today. There are some stories you will recognize and some you will be seeing for the first time. Each artist put their own spin on the story and the outcome is incredible. A playlist with everyone's video is in the description and in the card link in the top right corner of your video. Thank you for joining me on this magical ride through the enchanted forest.
paint on, my lovelies.